Hey, uh, do you have a scale or some extra triple A's? I think I got maybe a double ditch. Tour life, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Lunkers TV today, double the dose. It is Valentine's Day. Can you believe it? Spending Valentine's Day with Lunkers TV. I swear we spend more time with each other than we do with our wives. We just threw the covers off, unplugged the boats here at the hotel, and then we're heading to the lake. <laughs> at first, we gotta get some Chick-fil-A. I gotta put some soft soup in my mouth, you know, because uh, I still got some crazy stuff going on inside of there. Robert. Yeah. My Valentine for the day. Oh, I'm your Valentine forever. Wow. Woo! See that commitment right there, folks. <laughs> folks. And I don't even get a ring. <sighs> Man. You know what? We get we do probably need to take a second, thank our wives uh, for putting up with us. Because yeah. we probably spend more time with each other than we do with our actual wives. <laughs> That's actually just fast. crazy. So <laughs> Stephanie, Sarah, thank you for putting up with us and letting us go fish today on Valentine's Day. So a little backstory to Valentine's Day in the state of Texas. I think the number two bass, number two biggest bass ever caught, I think its name is Valentine. It's caught on Valentine's Day, that makes sense. That's, that's, <laughs> I would name it that too. 17 something pounds. Got a little crickedness going on here. You think you got a little crickedness? Yeah, <laughs> what you got is some skag scrape. Oh. Woo! Don't worry about that. That's the Florida just, dangle that's just, went deep. Yeah. We're also on a little crooked hill. Oh, you mean your pole's crooked? Look, you see that? Yeah, mine are like that too. I got one that's oh, a little. Is that normal or? I don't, I don't think, think it's normal. I think it's just how ours are. Yeah, mine aren't loose. They're just a little crooked. Gives a little side jab. So, what are your thoughts for the day, Rob? What are so, you thinking? For one, I'm probably gonna be flip all day because you already know how I am. That's just what that's you do. What I like to do, but I, there's not a lot of lakes in Texas that Rackley and I fish that have copious amounts of docks. So I'm probably gonna have a hard time getting off docks with depth. They're dirty too. If they have depth, ooh. I, I pretty much knew the answer to that as soon as I asked <laughs> Rob. He, he's just a flipping machine. That's what he loves to do. We're gonna get more into the specifics. Every day is different, y'all, especially this time of year. They can literally move up at any hour and the temperature is gonna be rising today so we could see some different changes as we fish through the day. I'm probably gonna start off just fishing a little deeper throwing a crankbait and maybe fishing off a little bit and I think this afternoon we'll see more action up shallow but I'm gonna fish different parts of the lake if you watched the last video I fished uh, on the southern part of the lake did pretty good caught some real nice fish but I'm looking for that I want to catch at least a 20 pound stringer I was a little shy last time sticking them on a jig is fun but we're gonna try all techniques to see what is gonna work best and bring it to you live not really but through the lens. Steven is gonna be dropping off that dock. Oh boy! Just send it! <laughs> oh, dang up! Stuck it! I think they're gonna start out at a different part of the lake than I am. We're gonna communicate. Hopefully, uh, hopefully one is better than the other and we can kind of communicate and say, hey man, you need to get up here, man. They're, they're, they're twerking on that jig right now up here, mid lake. Come on now. You need to get some CB radios in here, like smoking the Bandit or something like that. Let us know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. There's an old boat over there, an old charger. I breezed over here yesterday, but I kind of missed these deeper docks. I think there goes my special friend, my Valentine's Day friend back there. He's going up river. This is always interesting when me and Lunkers go out to kind of get the different perspectives and our different looks at things. So uh, he'll be linked down below too, where you can check out whatever, whatever the heck he's doing. But I'm pretty sure he's flipping wherever he's going. The rocks look good. This bank just looks nice. There's a lot of depth shifts and changes in this lake. And looking at a map helps extremely, extremely much. Look at this nasty water. Just screams crankbait. Screams crankbait. Y'all, I want to catch me. I want to catch me a daggum share lunker on Valentine's Day. That'd be my freshwater bass fishing dream. Oh! 
hop in a skid. Let's just try out of the wind for a minute. See what that's like. A little black and blue jig. Still on the search for my crankbait bite, but while I'm over here near this pocket, I want to check out these docks and out in front of them. There's a good chance the bass are going to be out in front of them as well, just around little things. Good idea to wear some polarized lenses so you might see those little objects. Pretty much fishing less than five foot. I think this whole pocket's less than five foot. That makes me think there might be some fish getting ready to spawn back in here. If I catch one up under here, I'll know that these fish are just wanting to be shallow all day. Now, yesterday I came here in the afternoon, fish were really shallow. That's pretty common for this time of year, trying to warm up in the afternoons. Water temps dropped a couple of degrees, not much. I'm gonna try something a little different today. I'm gonna go with a lipless crank try to rip it out of this moss grass. I know that they will still eat it. I mean, it's not, it's not good really to, it's hard to rip this stuff out. But same effect as fishing hydrilla at times. Oh, just got one. First cast, first cast trying that. It feels decent. Oh, it's running. That's gonna be a good fish, good one. First cast trying that, got one, smoked it. Always be experimenting, y'all. Good fish right there to start the day. Yeah, it's about two and three quarters. Go ahead and pull down. Make a few more casts here. Just your standard red crankbait. Nice fish, nice male bass. Just that little hair moss stuff. I'll tell you with these lipless cranks, always a good idea to just keep your rod pumping. Even if you're not ripping it out of the grass, just keep it pumping. It's just a reaction bite. They hit it like, as soon as you stop the bait that falls, they usually smoke it. That's just been my little technique tip that's helped me. The crankbait, it just, it gets caught up in there really hard. Like it keeps diving into it. With this, I can, kind of manage it, rip it out, keep it above the grass or the moss a little bit. And it's a good bait to fish in between the docks. I just got absolutely slammed by a fish. Doesn't really feel like a bass. Oh, it's a huge bass. It's a huge bass on the lipless crank. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. This could be like an eight pounder or so. Oh my gosh, giant giant and I felt like I was on a rock just take it easy baby take it easy baby felt like I was on a rock look how huge that fish is guys that's a giant that's a giant don't want to rush these fish when you got treble hooks in them like this Wow. I mean, it's just fighting big time. I gotta stay on the trolling motor. Amazing. This fish has got so much power, y'all. Still going. This is a, this is a fish moving into spawn, big female sitting up on this point right here so i'm just following it with the trolling motor taking it easy i thought i was on a rock i wasn't even rolling and then as soon as i felt the head shake i was like oh my gosh this is a giant what a fight what a fight y'all this fish has so much weight and power it feels like it's hooked in the tail but it's not Okay, come here, baby. I got this fish. Oh my gosh, y'all. That might be like a nine. That's an absolute giant. Absolute madness, y'all. My GoPro just died as I was reeling that fish in. I finally landed it. Oh 
my gosh, that might be a 10. I'm not even kidding. Hard, hard fighting fish. Oh my goodness. Like, just kept fighting and fighting. It's one of my longest bass fights I've ever had. We're about to see if this thing's a double digit. I think it's at least a nine, though. <sighs> my biggest bass of the year so far. On an old school, just Bill Lewis rattle trap. And look, one of the hooks came off, broke. This is why I was trying to really take it easy with that fish, because I knew, I knew these hooks are like old. Broke right there. Had it on 18 pound test and then my seven foot medium heavy big sexy. It's had a lot of bend in the rod and I just kept the drag loose. I actually thumbed it quite a bit. Absolutely crazy. I stuck it and then I thought I was hung. And then uh, when I felt the first head check, I turned on the GoPro. But uh, we're about to see how big this fish is. Hopefully my scale works. Dead coming. Come on. Batteries, no. I have one extra AAA. I don't know if this is going to be enough. <gasps> it just turned on. Oh, it says low. Okay, I'm gonna call Lunkers. Let's see if he has an extra battery or a scale. Do you have a scale or some extra triple A's? I think I got maybe a double ditch. Uh, lipless crank, red crawl. All right, I'll see you in just a minute. At back. I wanna weigh this fish as soon as possible. I made the mistake when I caught my biggest fish ever, it weighed in at 11.4, but they lose water weight every minute you got them in there. So I'm trying to get this fish up there as fast as possible. I think it's a niner. My Valentine. Let's give it a good gander. You think we might have something here? Yeah, I think we're close. It's that a big is, face. It's a big face. An 811. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not even close. I just don't understand how it. The fish is full of eggs, dude. It's just. It's about to pop. Okay, I'm gonna get one more way. Not because I don't trust lunkers, just because. I want to get a video of me holding it because it's just, it's, it's deceiving, dude. Like it you is. said, like when you pull this thing out of the live well, it is an absolute chunk, dude. I know. I don't like know. I'm just fat. No, it's, it's really huge head. Maybe it's, it's just not as long. I, it looks like a solid nine all day. A solid nine all day, right? All day. That's what I was thinking. I was like, it may not be 10, but I think it's going to be nine. And I usually it's, don't. No, you were, you were just under, just under. I mean, that ain't. You want to show them, I guess? They may want to, you never know what's well, not going. now, because it's reading 9, 8, 10. 8, 10? Like I was saying, uh, like every minute it's in there, it loses a little yeah, water Yeah, it's going to lose weight. Check this out. This is what I wanted to show everybody. First of all, full of eggs. So that fish is about two spawn. Keep and then, you're good, you're good can you get a tight shot of the hook there? Yeah, I can. This is what's crazy. I had to really play that fish. And there, there's the rest of that hook that broke off right there. That is absolutely insane. So, I mean, awesome day. My Valentine, baby. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'll even give you a little Valentine's Day kiss. We'll get that hook out for you. Broke off. Throwing in just an old rattle trap. Yeah, no, I can tell with that red hook. Right? That's like the old school, old That's school. one you got from Walmart. Back, back in, in 1982. 94. Yeah. <laughs> That's what won the 82 Bass Master Probably Classic. Take, take a. <laughs> Put some new hooks on there, but we'll get a good picture of this guy or this gal. Almost a nine, eight, 11. Huge fish, we'll let this fish go so we can have a nice spawn this year. Swam off strong, feels good. Valentine's day, I love ya. Well, y'all, I got my Valentine. I got my Valentine. It's really Stephanie. Hey, let's try to get a bigger one. What do you say? I mean, it's early. It's early in the day. We're about 1030 right now. Now that I'm already up here in the river, I was gonna kind of let Lunkers determine how it was going up here. And he's he caught some fish right off the bat. Similar pattern, cranking around rocks. Let's look at a map. Let's try to find something similar and get after it.
There you are. Golly. Uh-huh, yeah, you were in there. Oh, felt good just to get a bite. Get you in the boat on this jig. Come here, baby. I've worked so hard for you. That next bite. Oh. There's a nice one. Quit rolling. Ah, yes. Gosh, I swear that fish bit it a couple of times. I initially threw it in there, thought I felt something. And then wah bam. Got another one. That is about three and a half hours without a bite, y'all. This one's about half the size of the other one too, but still a super nice one. Absolutely ate that jig and crack and crawl. Like that little color combo too. I feel like my sniffs have to be extra strong today because <sighs> I haven't caught that many, but I've caught some good ones. Oh, that's probably getting close to four pounds right there. Let go of my glove. See you, my love. Come back to jump. Oh my gosh, what is going on? <sighs> Taking in every bite that I get today. Hook three, landed three. First one was uh, two and three quarters. Second one was almost nine, and that one was about four. So pretty good average largemouth today on the old Valentine's Day. Oh my gosh, y'all. I've worked so hard between the that fish and the one before and i finally came back down to the area where i was well not the area but the part of the lake the southern end of the lake just feel more familiar with it got more confidence i think the fish are bigger down here uh, but i just i know how to fish it a little bit better i feel like fishes to my my strengths a little bit better. Let's go get us another one. We still got a chance at a true Mondo today. Before this full moon comes in, they start spawning and these fish are fat. Now's the time when you catch the fatties. February. Ooh. What is hitting my bait right now? God, I got him. What is that? What the crap? Oh my gosh, there's a school of them. There is a big school of fish right there, ladies and gentlemen. I was just in them. God, they're hitting it again. Got it. What are you? What are you? They're white bass. I am the white bass master. I am the white bass master. I have found a school on this electronic unit that was just crazy. You know how I do it. I got to catch me some. I'm going to put on one of these death stalkers because they're just deadly. Got him. Oh my gosh. Look at this school. Look at that school on the graph. Insane. Oh yeah. And when you hook a large mouth, they pretty much come up straight to the top and jump most of the time. And look at my lure going down there. Look at my lure in amongst them, the fish right there. Watch, I'm not even gonna move my rod. It's just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a little doink. Oh, got him. Absolutely hosed it. Forceps for you, my friend. Oh my goodness. They're smacking it, they're all over it. They're fighting over it. I got them that time. You can see how they just come up. They follow each other there. Is there any big, scary largemouth down there that might want to eat this thing? Yeah, the crazy part about it is 50 yards from here, I had my big bass. They're thick. I swear I can go to I can go to anywhere there's white bass and it's they just they just get in my boat, man. They love me. 
I oblige him. Well, I had me some fun with the white bass, y'all. You know me. I gotta do it. Look how many there still are. On that mega. On that mega, you can see them all. There they are. Hooked up. Hooked up. Good bass. Good bass. Oh, it's running out. It's running out. Where are you going, bud? Where are you going, bud? Come here now. We're pulling down. Smoked it. We might lose this fish right here. No, we're, we're all oh, just came off right there. Full, full landing today. Nice fish, nice fish. Three maybe. Kerplunk, when they make a kerplunk like that, they got some girth, cranking some, some rocky areas. Transition area is really what it is. Transition area. And the bell rings. Well, y'all, I think it is time to put our danglers away. My wrist right here, forearm tendon, whatever you call that situation. It is clawed up because I've been ripping a trap all day trying to get fish on it and <laughs> it reminds me of fishing like a grass lake where literally that's how you get a lot of bites and you're trying to really get reaction bites out of fish and that's what I did today except it was on rocks I caught one good fish on the jig now the good thing about this video is it's a different view a different pattern uh, than the last video where it was mostly jigs and I didn't catch any fish on crankbaits this one, I caught my biggest bass of the year on a crankbait, and I also uh, ended up getting the most bites on a crankbait. I think this is important to talk about because in February, this is something that you gotta have in your arsenal no matter wherever you are. You gotta have yourself some sort of red lipless crankbait. I don't know what it is about red. It's a lot of people say it's crawfish. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe that, that is the case but they eat red and they will absolutely attack that color more so than, than shad colors in a lot of cases. If you guys are interested, I will leave a link down below uh, where you can go to Shop Carl's and get some of these and different selections. I'll pick out a couple of, of key ones, but the main thing is get red. I, I've got a couple of cheap ones here. This is a Cotton Cordell uh, and I had a Rattle Trap earlier. There's a lot of other brands that I like more. That's just what I had on hand here. I hadn't stocked up on red traps in a while. I was throwing that on a seven foot medium heavy action rod. This is a favorite big sexy right here. Uh, it, it has a good butt length on it where I could cast it out. Uh, honestly, if I could do today over again, now that I'm all fatigued, I'd probably go with like a seven four, seven six in the same action. Just You just don't want it to be too stiff, especially when you're not fishing grass. If you're fishing grass, you want something pretty stiff, but I'm fishing 18 pound fluorocarbon on here uh, with the seven foot medium heavy. Medium heavy is the key though. That medium heavy really allows you to get that pump going and get that bait to jerk, jerk, jerk? That can be a word, let's do it. Jerk up and stop, and a lot of times they hit it when you and stop right there and then bah, grab it, and they'll grab it pretty hard. So you wanna have something that's uh, not too stiff to where you can fight those fish and, and with treble hooks like I did that real big one all around the boat and I wasn't too worried about it coming off. I didn't have a high speed gear ratio reel. Probably a seven to one would have been a little easier. Making those little adjustments definitely helps. And the fluorocarbon, that's also key because it's, it's not like mono where it has more stretch in it. I'm using a low stretch fluoro and typically I would throw this on like 15, get better casting distance, but this lake has got some real big fish and it's got a lot of rock, so I went up to 18. And it's going so fast by them, they're not really looking at the line. They're just seeing a red thing, they're like, I want it. And I think I'm done with this water. I think I'm gonna head to another lake. I'm on the road this week. I wanted to hit this lake. I came here, I thought it was really great. I was like, man, it's so good. I wanna hit it another day. I'm glad I did, because I got a huge bass. But now it is time to go explore somewheres else. Y'all wanna come along for the adventure? I know you do. Let's go catch some more bass together, y'all. Subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss a single bite. And I will see you guys on the next one. I lost my hat. I'll tip my glasses too.